Welcome to First Steps in Mission, the show where we talk to a few young adults, not only about their first steps in mission, but also continue to find out what they are doing in mission. Today, we have the wonderful Lydia Young. Lydia, why won't you tell the people a little bit about you and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? So, I'm a University of Manchester first-year midwifery student. And so, at the moment, I'm studying and I'm doing placement and I'm really enjoying it. How did you get into midwifery? So initially I wanted to do nursing. I was like really passionate about just caring for people. Um, and I just had no idea what I wanted to specify in exactly. And then my sister had her first child and it just honestly blew my mind, just like watching her throughout a pregnancy. And then obviously like my niece being invited into the world was just such an amazing moment that I was just kind of like, this seems like a degree or a qualification or whatever that actually really excites me rather than just doing it because it feels like the right thing to do. Great, so the miracle of life mm. kind of like sparked your interest in it. And did you know right from then or did you have other plans on what you wanted to do in between or did you go straight into it? So I decided I wanted to do midwifery when I was kind of in like first year college. So I decided on my options, like it would have been a really difficult thing to just kind of restart the whole thing. Um, and one main thing as well that I was kind of like, I don't want to restart college again yet, was because I had planned to kind of do a gap year um, with the Message Trust um, called Message Academy. And I found that out about when I was like 14 at a church camp. Um, me and my twin sister were there watching like the promo video and we were just like, we need to do that. Like, it just seems like we need to do it. So I knew that midwifery was going to be put on hold for a bit because of my gap year. And I kind of said like at the beginning of the gap year as well, like I'm not, I'm not like closing my hand about it. Like I want, I want God to do whatever like he wants to do with me, wherever he wants to guide me. Like this is something I'd like to do, but I'm not necessarily expecting to do it like with all my heart, so. That's cool. So at 14, you heard about Academy. So from 14, was Academy your first encounter of like doing mission or were you mm. doing that from 14 onwards? Not really, like I was just kind of like, going to youth group every Friday, hearing about church and like Jesus. And it was just normal life. My parents were like leaders of my church at home. So it was pretty like simple and like hearing about prayer and things was so normal to me. There wasn't really anything that like was different. So I still kind of had this teenage like section of my life where my youth leader was like, you know, you don't have to wait till you gap year to like start like doing things differently, like you can start now. Um, but at the time I was just like, oh, but all my friends are having fun, like, and I want to join in with them. Like, why do I have to be different? So it was kind of like this little thing of like, I knew I needed to sacrifice a lot going on to academy. And I kind of started to prepare myself, but I still had a bit to go really when I joined. Okay, so when you did join, what were the sacrifices that you made? What was it that made that change for you? It was, it was kind of like not just seeing um, my life with Jesus as like a Sunday thing. Okay. It was definitely like um, every day, like going to God and talking to him and giving him like the day and prayer. Like that was something that I just did in my time of need. And like, just, I really enjoyed like going to people's birthday parties and having a bit to drink, feeling like I was just this big like character that, you know, was doing really cool things when like, when I joined Academy, I started like reading the Bible and understanding like these things aren't really important. These aren't like what we should base our life around. And I was like really challenged in that. And that's when I kind of grew in my faith um, towards like prayer and towards reading my Bible, like actually knowing that when I read my Bible, I'm listening to God's direct word, like um, and listening to a preach I'm not getting everything I need because that's like through someone else. Mm -hmm. and that's not through God himself. And like when I read and try and understand his word, it's so like personal to me. And that's where I can gather like what I believe, like the Bible says. That's cool. So it sounds like you went on like a self journey of mm. understanding it, not just from your parents' perspective, yeah. but actually understanding faith for yourself and claiming it for yourself. Is mm. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds so cool. And was was there anything on the course that helped you in regards to like, you still want to do this midwifery stuff, but you're doing this course, you find out more about God. Did it change your perspective on midwifery or did it aid your perspective on doing midwifery mm. as a course? 
I guess it aided it in like the sense of, you know, reading like scriptures of Jesus, like just loving people. It definitely made me like, I definitely like want to do that care aspect that kind of caught me on to like nursing in general. But um, from a different perspective, it definitely aided me in like completely different way, which I didn't expect, which was to work like in prison. On Academy, we had the privilege to go into prison and like lead a worship service and like listen to a testimony and let like these guys in prison have an opportunity to accept Christ in their life. And it was something that like when we were traveling to, I was kind of like really anxious about. I was really scared, like who are these people? Like, you know, they're criminals. Like I never like associated myself with them before. Mm -hmm. And this like anxiety was definitely like, I think like from the enemy, just kind of telling me like, this is a scary place that you should never have to be in. Um, and when being there, I just had this really like overwhelming peace about like these people are people. They just deserve like the peace and the, the security of Jesus as much as we do. Yep. Um, and so it was something that really like gripped me and I was really interested and um, yeah, I was just really like wanting to know more about prison ministry and what it's like working in prison and helping those people. Great. So on the course, you get to go into prison mm -hmm. and figure out all of that. And whilst you were there, you kind of caught a bit more God's heart for people in prison. Mm -hmm. So how does that then translate into what you're doing now? So I was chatting to my mentor about how like I really wanted to do midwifery, but I also like had this really passionate kind of feeling for like working in prison. And I was just really like interested in it. And she said, like, why don't you think about like merging the two? Like, have you ever thought about being a midwife in prison? And I was like, I didn't even know there was like a job role for that. Like I had no concept of like healthcare in prison. When I um, when I started looking into it, I was reading like articles of women like having to have their babies, like without a healthcare professional present that was qualified in that kind of area because there was such like a short um, staff for mid midwives in prison. Mm -hmm. And I, it was then that I was kind of like, oh, this seems like something I should really like go into this, like these women, yes, they've messed up, um, but they deserve the same healthcare as us and the same opportunity to bring life into the world. And so after Academy, like when I was thinking about this more and um, do my access course that I had to do to get me into university, I had the opportunity that year to volunteer with one of the prison workers here um, in a, a woman's prison in South Manchester and they have a mother and baby unit so they um, really try and encourage the attachment and bonding between a mother and child like cool. once they've um, been brought into prison and we were working with one woman at the time who was living in that unit mm. and it was so interesting to see like how much of a difference having her baby present with her in prison made for her and her mental state and I was just like, this is something where I could see myself working. I could see myself working, you know. Yeah, it just really encouraged me even more to like want to go after this. And it just got me really excited. And yeah, I'm still like really interested in it now. That's so cool. But like when, when you're talking about um, the women in prison, like just in my son, I was like, oh, that sounds so terrible. But actually it's great having people like you that actually want to change mm. the situation and change the system and see that as your mission field, which is real cool. Mm. And all of that, kind of got birth from your time on Academy and going mm, into yeah. prison with some of the teams, right? Mm, yeah. That's so cool. Um, and we've actually got an interview with one of our prison workers, Becky Hills, who's going to tell us a little bit more about what she does in prison and when their students go in, how that experience is for them. So watch this video. Hey guys, we're here with Becky. Becky did Academy. When did you do Academy, Becky? 2015 to 16, I believe. So would you like to tell us just a bit about uh, what you do and your experience on Academy? So I, I came when I was 23, I think, um, uh, to do Academy. Just kind of, I just heard about it um, from Cardiff and the, all the opportunities and all the different things that we were offered just kind of opened up. Uh, new pathways of thinking, I think, and into what I wanted to, to do. And I interned with 
uh, the message after Academy with the prison team, uh, going into the, the various prisons in the Northwest that we, we work with. And after that year, I took a full-time job at one of the men's prisons that we work in. Will you tell us a bit about your experience sort of going into prison um, and how you do mission and evangelism in prison? The, the part that we all thrive on is that we get to go in there very openly and overtly and say we are we're Christians we're working alongside chaplaincies we don't have to um, kind of pretend that we're just doing like social action we can go in very clearly and be open with our faith um, obviously sensitively because you're working with a multi-faith team uh, in a prison but the yeah the opportunities that we get given that the chaplains for example don't um, to share our faith and to share our story and um it's a real um, privilege, actually, to be able to journey with people. And, you, you know, you're in there day in, day out, um, hanging out with these people and running groups with them, but also having one-to-one sessions with them and chatting with, with guys and girls on the wings and um, just kind of building real relationships. But what we, as the, the key workers in there, get to do is kind of keep going in and keep going back and really building strong relationships with with the guys and the girls that we're working with. Yeah, I just love hearing about it. It's something that's super close to my heart because I've been into prison with you and I mentioned that I bring in the students as well Mm -hmm. into prison. So we just share a bit about how, what that is like. We've had students before that have been like terrified at the thought of of coming in and Mm -hmm. I can't be around these people. I don't, uh, you know, what if they're like this? What if they're like, like the thought of coming into prison is really foreign to a lot of us. Like, you know, I'm a very middle-class person. The thought of going to prison was the furthest thing from my mind. Like my my big rebellion when I was 18 was I got the top of my ear pierced. Like that's that's it. (laughs) Um, So... (laughs) The thought of going into prison was just so far away from from me. And every time we've had anyone that's been scared or anxious about it, you can just see when they come in that they realise that the prison's full of normal people Mm. who've who've messed up, who've made mistakes, who've, um, you know, done things wrong. And it's always really encouraging to see the students kind of get that of like, oh, actually... Any of us could end up here if we had a, a bad day in the car or if uh, something like this happened. It kind of puts you on a real level playing field mm. with the people in there that you kind of thought were like the criminals. Is there anything that you'd want to say to someone who might be considering Message Academy or considering prison work? I was quite comfortable in what I was doing before. I had quite a, a comfortable career track ahead of me potentially because of like my degree and stuff and actually it just felt very strongly God calling me out of the comfortable and into something that I didn't know what it looked like Mm. um coming to academy it was supposed to be a year in Manchester and then I'd leave and I'm still here if if it's where God's prompting you then it'll become clear and it'll it'll make sense even if it doesn't like I moved with it just made no sense and I thought what am I doing this is ridiculous but yeah throughout the year the opportunities that we had the the missional um opportunities and placements the people that I got to meet and work with it was it was massive for me um and then thinking about prisons yeah it I think if you ever have an opportunity to go in you need to take it um, because it's something that I don't think a lot of us think about if we're kind of re- far removed from that sort of yeah. lifestyle or community or whatever. Like some of us are communities, we see that sort of thing all the time. But for others of us that live quite sheltered lives, like the thought of going into a prison is something that you'd never even have thought of because mm-hmm. um, it's just not who you are. But actually, you can have a real... Uh, impact on the people in there and and hopefully they will on you as well thank you so much for sharing becky sharing your heart and sharing your experiences so it sounds like you had a similar experience to what becky had um just a student on academy get the opportunity to go into prison and all of a sudden Mm. your whole world view has changed and your direction of what you're wanting to do in life has changed is absolutely amazing 
Um, as you also said, you are a student. Mm -hmm. So how, how did Academy help shape you to be a student as well as be a midwifery in prison? Yeah. Did it help you? Did it not help you? What was the vibe with that? Um, it was definitely interesting, like on Academy living with um, other Christians, other people on the course with you and constantly going into a place of work that everyone was Christian. It was so comfortable and it was so like reassuring, like you could just um, openly talk about your faith, worship together on a morning. And it was a really amazing thing that definitely strengthened me in my faith, seeing other people so full of faith all the time. Um, but it was something that it does have to come to an end at the end of Academy. Like you have to get ready to move on from that safe, comfortable place of being with other Christians, because if unless you work in ministry again, you won't necessarily have that, especially if you're going into university. When I started uni, that was when I like moved into a flat full of people that I had no idea who they were, their background, what they like thought of Christianity. And so it was something at first that was quite daunting. I was quite scared of, um, but getting into a group chat just before we um, arrived at uni, one of the girls private messaged me and was like, are you a Christian? I see it on your Instagram. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, yeah, I am too. And it was so reassuring. Like no matter what level of faith she had, it didn't matter if she had done a year out like me. Yep. It was just knowing that like, if I talk about my faith, I'm not the only one. At uni, sometimes it's a time when people are like, this is when I'm going to live for myself. Mm -hmm. Especially if they've never had time before where they really realize and grapple with who God is. So at university, it's a really interesting place where people are like, knew me kind of concept. And as a Christian and someone who wants to continue in their faith, sometimes you've just got to kind of like tell everyone that you are. So you hear like people, oh yeah, like I am too. Like, oh, my parents are and like, I know about this stuff and that's when it opens doors to conversations and and so I think one piece of advice is just like to be really open about your faith and um, going from um, a really concentrated Christian environment to a um, what society thinks is right environment and it was a bit difficult at first but you definitely can grow a lot in it. That's cool. Um, and have you been able to have like, some deep conversations with some of your flatmates, yeah. some of your friends? Mm, yeah. So like on Academy, you get taught about apologetics, which is an amazing kind of difficult theology based um, conversations about like, you know, when people ask about were, were dinosaurs real if they're not in the Bible? And like, what about like, you know, the Big Bang and all this stuff? And um, they're questions that people who aren't Christian will just come up to you and ask you and you have to kind of be ready to talk about that. On Academy learning about that stuff really prepared me for that time at uni when one of my flatmates um, uh, lost someone quite early on in her life. Um, and a big question she had was like, why is there suffering? Like, why did I have to lose someone? And it was something that I was able to be quite like honest about in my faith and just be like, I don't believe God wants that for you. I don't believe God like, had that planned for you but it's how like you go to God in strength and knowing that he can provide you with the ultimate peace and just coming from like a dark place like that into like lightness because he is the light in a dark situation that was the kind of way I like explained it to her and she still kind of like doesn't get it but she wants to believe there's something greater and that's just enough like you know faith the size of a mustard seed as it says in the bible like you don't need a lot to believe in such a big um, historical person like Jesus. Um, That's so cool. And the apologetics um, stuff that you learned on Academy mm -hmm. helps you with some of those big yeah, questions. Yeah, definitely. That's so cool. Uh, last question for you. What would you say to somebody who's maybe thinking, maybe they're 14 out there, like you were in a church thinking about doing a gap year. Um, what would you say to them about doing a gap year? Mm -hmm. Um, it's the greatest dedication that you could give to God from like the life that he has given you. I think it's such an amazing thing to be like, if this guy created me, I want to know more. And like it is genuinely just out of that interest and in that um, like just being interested about who God is and stuff and knowing about him. And on a gap year like this, like you are so concentrated in like what it is that 
God did and Jesus did on the cross, but also sharing that with people and why that's important to you is such like a big foundation to the course because it's about evangelism. It's about sharing Jesus with people. So you've got to kind of understand like about the Bible more before you can really understand like more about Jesus and who he is. And so it's a great starting point if you feel like you want to grow in evangelism. That's so cool. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Lydia, for coming on and telling us about your midwifery, all of your first steps in mission. Please stay tuned for the next episode of First Steps in Mission. See you soon. watching message live and we hope it's been a great encouragement to you would you subscribe to our youtube channel like us on facebook and ring that bell for notifications and thanks for watching